Michael Jordan is arguably the greatest player to ever play the game of basketball, but what if I told you there was a man who could have made a case to reach that pinnacle and become a genuine rival to Michael Jordan and the Bulls dynasty of the 90s? That man was none other than Len Bias, and this is his story. Len Bias, the Maryland University basketball star on his way to becoming a world champion Boston Celtic died of an apparent heart attack today at Leland Memorial Hospital in Prince George's County. We coach, coach our back, well, the manager our back, and he told me that, uh, he told me that I wasn't going to get much, I wasn't going to stop, but I was going to get a lot of playing time about to be the sixth man. But it all came down, were you really hoping that it could have been Boston in the end? Yeah, I really was hoping that it was Boston, that my dream came true. Leonard Kevin Bias, or Len as he came to be known, was born on November 17, 1963 in Landover, Maryland, a part of the basketball breeding ground of Prince George's County, which has since produced players such as Kevin Durant, Michael Beasley and Jeff Green, who ironically went to Northwestern High School where Bias attended. He was one of four children born to James Bias Jr. and Dr. Lenise Bias. He had a sister Michelle and two brothers Eric and James III who was known as Jay. He was a tall, unassuming boy who was given the nickname Frosty by a pastor at his church because of his cool, laid-back demeanor. While attending Northwestern High School in Hyattsville, Maryland, it became obvious that his skill sets were progressing rapidly. Colleges such as Syracuse, Georgetown, and Indiana were recruiting him, but Bias chose to remain in his comfort zone of Prince George's County and play for the University of Maryland. From the very beginning, legendary Terps coach Lefty Driesel saw the boy's potential and made him the centerpiece of his strong basketball program. He was as strong as a bull, as fast as a cheetah, and could leap out of the gym. He had a playground swagger about him that Lefty loved, and he made his teammates better with just his mere presence on the court. There really wasn't anything that he couldn't do on the hardwood. The silky smooth forward with mad hops could rebound, shoot, play defense, and he loved dunking on his opponents. Bias ultimately developed into an All-American player. He led the Atlantic Coast Conference in scoring in his junior year, was named the ACC's Player of the Year, and earned second-team All-American honors. His senior season was highlighted by his performance in an overtime victory against top-ranked North Carolina, in which he scored 35 points, including seven in the last three minutes of regulation and four in overtime. Bias collected his second consecutive ACC Player of the Year award at the end of the year and earned back-to-back All-American honors, this time named to the first team. By his senior year, scouts from various NBA teams viewed Bias as the most complete forward in the class of 1986. Celtic scout Ed Badger called Bias an explosive and exciting kind of player and compared him to none other than Michael Jordan. That June in Boston, the Celtics were putting the finishing touches on their third NBA championship in five years. Former coaching great, now general manager Red Auerbach had his eyes on Bias and the future of the Celtics. Red always had a keen eye for talent and he knew that Len was a player that his aging team could use. In one fell swoop, he traded Gerald Henderson to the Seattle Supersonics for the rights to the second pick in the 1986 NBA draft. The Cleveland Cavaliers had the first pick and made no secret about the fact that they would be selecting Brad Dowdy, the center out of North Carolina. Without hesitation, Red Auerbach drafted Bias, lit his customary victory cigar, and watched with the rest of the basketball world as a jubilant Len Bias walked across the stage and shook Commissioner David Stern's hand. After weeks of interviewing the Terp forward and submitting him to physical evaluations and drug tests, Auerbach knew he had his man. Both Celtics fans and Maryland fans alike were salivating at the mouth in anticipation of Bias joining the team of Larry Bird, Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish. All of Bias' hard work and dedication to his craft had brought the young man to this point in his life. Here he stood on the precipice of greatness, 
and no one could have imagined or predicted the sequence of events that would soon follow. The next day, Len's father James, who had accompanied his son to New York for the draft, returned home during the afternoon. A contingency of reporters had gathered and were disappointed that Len wasn't in attendance for a little Q&A session. James assured the DC and Baltimore sports writers that his son would be available the next day to answer all their questions. Meanwhile, Len was in New York, signing a $3 million endorsement deal with Reebok. Reebok had watched Michael Jordan sign a shoe deal with Nike two years before and had visions of Bias transforming their company the way Michael was doing for Nike. Upon signing the deal and tying up some loose ends with the Celtics front office, Len hopped in his brand new Cobalt Blue 300ZX and drove back to College Park. Len arrived at the campus around 11pm. Many of his teammates, friends and players of the school's football team were at the dorm called Washington Hall awaiting his arrival. The future NBA star patiently answered all their questions. At around 1.30am, Len left the hall to go to a party and returned shortly after 3am. Lines of cocaine were being distributed and Bias made his fateful error in judgement by joining in on the festivities. At 6.32 in the morning, a 911 call was made by his childhood friend Brian Tribble. A frightened and high Tribble was pleading for medical assistance. During the call, a confused Tribble begged for help immediately and kept saying Len's name over and over. PG County Emergency Unit was subsequently sent to the dorm. The ambulance arrived on the scene at 6.40am and the technicians found Len Bias unconscious and not breathing. He then leaned back on his couch and started going into seizures. After having no success in reviving Bias, the paramedics put his body in the ambulance and sped off to Leland Memorial Hospital in Riverdale, Maryland. The physicians tried everything. They gave him epinephrine, sodium bicarbonate, lidocaine, calcium, and bretillium. In one last hopeful effort, they placed a pacemaker on his chest, but it was too late. At 8.55 a.m., Len Bias was pronounced dead. A local success story took a tragic turn this morning. Len Bias, the Maryland University basketball star on his way to becoming a world champion Boston Celtic, died of an apparent heart attack today at Leland Memorial Hospital in Prince George's County. In the days and weeks that followed Bias's death, the University of Maryland felt the weight of a media whirlwind. After further investigations by the police, several grams of cocaine was found under the driver's seat of Bias's car. The NCAA was under pressure to find out what happened. The Washington Post and the Baltimore Sun both wrote scathing pieces on the educational practices of the university. It was discovered that Bias was 21 credits short of his requirements, despite using all of his athletic eligibility. Coach Riesel came under fire when it was learned that upon getting a phone call and learning of the incident at Washington Hall, he told Bias's teammates to remove all the drugs from Len's room. Len's parents, James and Lemise, accused the University of Maryland of neglecting the academic statuses of their athletes. Everyone from the University of Maryland Athletic Department to the admissions office to the campus police to Brian Tribble were being held accountable for the tragedy. On October 17th, Athletic Director Dick Dull resigned and after 17 years of service to Maryland basketball, Lefty Driesel was fired. The more people went digging, the more dirt came to the surface. The NCAA banned Maryland from appearing on TV for a year 
and took scholarships from the school. To this day, Maryland has a strict admission requirement and expanded academic support. On July 25th, 1986, Brian Tribble was indicted for possession of cocaine with the intent to distribute. Teammates Terry Long and David Gregg were charged with possession and obstruction of justice. The charges against Long and Gregg would be dropped in exchange for testimony against Tribble. Tribble would eventually plead guilty to being a major drug dealer and on October 15, 1990, he was sentenced to 10 years of prison. Bud Marshall was the district attorney up for re-election at the time, and many people believe he used this tragedy to further his aspirations. To this day, there are heated debates as to whether Brian Tribble was the murderer that Marshall painted him out to be, or just a scapegoat for a flawed university and two grief-stricken parents. There is no question that Tribble and Maryland Athletics took the blame for Len's bad decision and the university's infrastructure. In 1988, Congress passed an anti-drug act that is called the Len Bias Law. It called for stiffer penalties and expanded the D.A.R.E. program. Three-fourths of your life to go. That's three more lifetimes to you. So don't blow it. Don't do drugs. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. The death of Bias had a ripple effect that not only affected the history of Maryland basketball, but also the Boston Celtics. After hearing the news, Larry Bird quipped, that is the cruelest thing I ever heard. Boston would again reach the finals in 1987, but would fall to Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers. The Celtics were obviously a player short, and one can only wonder what would have happened if Bias was on that team. In 1993, they would lose another rising star, when Baltimore native Reggie Lewis would die in the middle of a pickup game due to a heart attack. The Celtics would not reach the finals again until 2008. If Leonard lived, would he have presented a true rival to Michael Jordan and the Bulls of the 90s? Would Reebok have grown into the conglomerate that Nike has become? How could a world-class athlete with the body of a Greek god fall prey to such a drug? Would he have become the player everyone thought he would? The speed of James Worthy, the power of Dominique Wilkins, and the grace of Jordan. These are all questions that will never be answered. But one thing is for sure, Len Bias is the greatest basketball player to never play in the NBA.